Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. 
Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the setting, you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to meet your acquaintance. But here we are. As she says the word, officer, you feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. No, buddy. That's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Really now? Check this out. You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing is the ULAN frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. is used to sort of make the pail more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pail, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. Sounds like she knew someone who used to man one of those stations. But she won't tell you about her. Boy, you're one empathetic police officer to have guessed even that right now. So... What we are experiencing is the concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking, and you just might get an opportunity to break the loose. I built it myself. And she's proud of it too, as she ought to be. This is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Yeah. 
my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops. And of herself, merely as prey. If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder one. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, and you'll get through this. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. As opposed to the other knives she's finding there now. Hardy for one. I was. Before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. It's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. It was dark in the shed. The waves outside had calmed down. She looked at the loaded gun. Then she cracked the barrel open and took the bullet out. Not today. No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. Oh, I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Oh, fuck. Took some convincing my ass. Those guys liked me, I know it. This is what happens to people whom people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. did make her forgive them, a little. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. 
a strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. You think I was envious of his conquests? Look, pussy's not a problem for me, and definitely not a reason to off someone. See her confident gaze, her turned arms. Yeah, she wouldn't have had much trouble in the intimacy department. Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate him, okay? I'm listening. And? The gun store. Trigger happy jacks. What did you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. Sure don't. A breach loader? No. This is such a wipeout. A Nachtway 80 front loader. Two barreled. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. That isn't it. That Merc was probably shot from a distance with a military grade rifle. Otherwise, everyone at the Whirling would have heard the shot downstairs. No, they're not practical. Break too often. Yeah, evidence. Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't even have been enough time. Look, fuck you, man. I might also have stopped by the bar. She speaketh truth. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. Don't know it, but also... Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around? Come on. Was that pity? For you? She sees your grasping for straws here. I never did understand why, when someone dies, a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. No, I did not. I considered her a good friend, yeah. I'm not following your clever insinuations, Detective. If I want to stare at a pretty girl, I can pick one up at a bar. Or, worst case scenario, look at a naughty photo. Who has time to go skulking about the whirling, drilling holes in walls? What the fuck, man? She's everyone's type. She's your type. Are you sure you're not the one who was excited about the peephole? She's beginning to suspect you've broken into her lorry now. Nope. Look. She has an effect on people. That je ne sais quoi that makes it impossible not to look at her when she walks into the room, and very difficult to look away. But travel enough and you realize... For the same reason that she's everyone's type as an object of desire, She's not irreplaceable. Oh, so that's where you were going with this. Well, that's a very sentimental way of putting it. We both had pasts we didn't want to catch up with us, and we enjoyed listening to music together. 
Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally shaking from the pain. Okay, fine. I was into her. Clausy was into me too for a time, I know it. We even fooled around once. And yeah, after that I thought maybe we could make a go of it. Clausy only said they may be kissed. Someone is lying here. If that's what she wants on the record, so be it. I'm not about to go into details for you to jerk off to later. Seriously, just move on. She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leaving me on. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but thought, fine, I'll take it and move on. No ill will, then. It wasn't a problem for her. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried she'd blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing can make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his mortal coil. It was a no-brainer. Go ahead. It's your body. And why too, he thinks. But keep on. This must be done. Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure, I hung out there. She's got this great antenna. The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Plaza. It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. So, part of bold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. That really comes as a blow to her. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? Beneath it, she's relieved Tommy didn't betray her. That's your prerogative. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer, for the Union. She deliberately avoided the name of the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. There. It's going to be easier to reach the machine now. You won't get to. 
Your dirty little tricks won't work with me. There's a sinister note in her voice. Even with the gun and the compressor, she's afraid of me. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes, her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. What is radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. She eyes you, warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh... All right, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasha comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like it'd been hanged. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. She looks shaken. She wasn't surprised to be ratted out, but framed. Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. You can see it. Her lips, though still white, don't seem to tremble as much anymore. She moves with focus and deliberation. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck. To big lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the hardy boy. I wasn't sure whether to admire her, or be disturbed. As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But, even if this is true, weren't you worried the mention might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop, this cop. That strange, distant fear is getting close now. It's a fear of yourself. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something. 
to himself. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the white noise. <laughs> it's especially bad, Sonny. Felt like a vein exploded. Everyone in Jamrock. The cops. The criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name, too. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to la puta madre. Did someone mention a fucked up tie? I call bullshit! You're too crazy to be corrupt! So she knows your name? That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know and are scared. I don't know. Sounds pretty convincing to me. Nah. That I'm not planning to shoot you is the extent of the courtesy I can extend to la puta madre at present. You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? Now I have Harry can opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. She's not going to change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyway? I'm sure you do. I bet they're just outside waiting. I guess I'll take my chances. Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman, the woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. That sound about right? No idea who these people are. Literally. Satellite officer Vickmere looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Miller. We could either take a room here in the work or go home for today. Let's go home, John. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Heidelstein. He can give us a ride. Break jam. Lock. Set. Run and leave me here. Please delete! Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. What bunker? Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... The lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes it is. She's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. 
You need to give her options. You know. This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude, doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on the gun loosens. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. Her tent. We should check it out. Yes? The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Rager Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine, it's a leather notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately, like right now. Thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. She's got good taste and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Short wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. The way some of those question marks trail off into ellipsis. She was going through a tough time. 
The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. She is referring to betraying a previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self-defense? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. You didn't follow through. You should have shot her in the head. The thought steadies your nerves. The journal stops shaking in your hand. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. The most recent entry is from today. It reads, even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run, not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. It looks like she might have been framed. That would be a first, or a fourth. But who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. Classy was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself, or... Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. see fast the spirits the blue medicinal spirits grab the bottle and uncork it it is time to unleash the other world hush hush Bratan. now is not the time to celebrate now is the time to get ready trust me on this this is what it's all been building towards it's gonna be off the hook off all hooks the bottle opens with a silent, mysterious hiss. The fumes rising from its mouth are as crisp as the northern winds. 
howling somewhere, lashing the boardwalk with brine and rain. An ancient warmth crawls under your skin. No, Bratan! Take me off! Bratan! Have I ever lied to you? Just take me off! Your fingers manage to undo the oily knot and the necktie slides off. It looks so frail sitting there in your hand, weighing almost nothing. Now, put me in the bottle! Trust me! Just trust me! You and I are gonna have so much fun it should be illegal! Just put me in the bottle, Bratan! I'm not gonna let you down! You and I are like the same person! As the necktie slides into the purifying liquid, large stains of grease rise off from it and float to the surface. There, they quickly dissolve and disappear completely, cleansed by the blue spirit fire of 98.7% pure alcohol. The fabric looks almost new again, no longer like a disgusting worm of the lower intestine, but like a colorful and deadly poisonous reef snake of the Insulindian ocean. The necktie floats in the bluish liquid with almost unearthly grace. It's like an organic sample brought back from a distant star system inhabited by sentient neckwear. There is silence. The lieutenant has been observing you quietly all this time. He's struggling to keep silent, but finally seems to give up. I've got to ask, what are you doing? Of course it has. And what has the necktie been telling you, if I may ask? Okay, so why did you put it in the bottom? Right, okay. Anyway, I'm glad you told me your necktie has been speaking to you. That must not have been easy. We're all under stress. This is turning into a great big mess. I'm not judging. Just keep it together. Let's go. I'm afraid we don't have time for rest stops right now, officer. We should really get back to the whirling. Please tell me we are not here to look for a headless man in a tracksuit riding a horse. Because there's no such thing. Don't listen to the lieutenant. He doesn't know anything.
No one's actually seen the headless fawn rider because he doesn't exist. He's an urban legend. A legend, meaning a story that's not real. There's nothing to wait for. We should get some rest. It's been a long day. Yes, stay. What's a few more minutes going to hurt? There, we waited. Nothing happened. Happy now? Your ears hum from the silence inside your mind. I know myths and legends are enticing, but in the end they're just stories for children, to teach them lessons or to frighten them. Let's go. It's very late. We should be resting already. Tomorrow will be another tough day. <laughs>